For some time now, big cities have transformed former warehouse space to residential loft living. One of the greatest challenges when converting a loft space is creating a kitchen with room for cooking, storage, and entertaining. And that was accomplished here in this New York City loft. Joe Tanny of Resolution 4 Architecture created an organized gourmet kitchen. And Joe, it seems very organized, but it also seems effortless. I think a lot of planning probably did go into it, though. That's right, Chris. When our client originally approached us, he was interested in only refinishing his existing kitchen cabinets. Uh, wow. The final result, after the design process, we decided to not only gut his entire kitchen, but also the entire loft space. And that made you put the kitchen in this end of the loft. Why? Well, we actually reorganized the entire loft. The kitchen is to the rear of the apartment because of the constraints of the existing plumbing risers. But it serves as a terminus to the dining room and the living room and a larger informal uh, entertaining gathering area. And it separates the private uh, bedroom beyond. And I have to say, it certainly pulls your eye down here with this wonderful hood and probably one of the biggest islands that I've ever seen. What is this made of? Well, the top, it looks like a butcher block. We actually made this out of a white maple flooring and finished it with a butcher's wax and wrapped it with an aluminum edge uh, so we wouldn't see the, the side of the wood. Why did you use flooring instead of butcher block? Well, actually, to find a slab of butcher block this big was too expensive. So it was cheaper to do it this way. Great idea. I like that. You also have a lot of stuff going on underneath. That's right. We've got a lot of storage underneath. We used off-the-shelf metro wire shelving, which you can find in the catalog. Great stuff. And we designed it such that it's a U configuration underneath. We allowed room for two very large trash cans, one for garbage, one for recycling here in New York. And uh, there's plenty of storage for trays and the microwave, and wine, water. Yeah, I notice you have the microwave underneath and a plug right there. So That's you can right. use it right here. You don't even have to lift it up. That's right. Now these bar stools at the end look very comfortable. I want to try them out in a minute. So <laughs> tell well, me. Well, they're great. Actually, um, after designing the island, our client went on a uh, pilgrimage to find the perfect bar stools for this very cool island. And he actually found them in a local uh, vintage furniture store just a few blocks from here. He found them in the basement. Really? So we pulled them up, refinished them, put new leather on them, and they work great. They're fantastic looking, too. You balanced off this island with a wonderful work area. You really do have that triangle here, I'd say. But the hood just catches your eye. That's stainless. Well, Frank Lloyd Wright, when he designed homes, used the fireplace as the focal point, and everything yeah. re revolved around that. Well, we reinterpreted that idea here and used the professional cooking range in the hood as the hearth to our apartment and the terminus to the entire entertainment area. Sort of a 90s version of it all. That's it right. works. I like the carts that you have on either side. Um, you've got that same butcher block. Tell me why you put them there. Well, these are very similar to the island, made out of metro wire as well, maple flooring for butcher blocking as well. They're also on casters, so when cooking for a large group and people are in the dining room, you can actually cart them into the dining room and use them as serving rolling carts. That, that is really brilliant. I love what you use for the countertops. It's just that clean look again of a stainless. Yes, it is. This is uh, stainless steel. We used it, just laminate it right on top of wood counters and use it for the backsplash as well and it matches the stainless appliance and, and the hardware we use throughout the apartment. Joan, I have to tell you, I have not seen in a kitchen door pulls that are that big. So where did you find them? Well, these are actually hardware used for doors as opposed to kitchen cabinets, but we found them in a catalog. Um, they're brushed stainless steel, and we like the aesthetic. We thought it went well with everything else we're using here in the kitchen. What about the cabinets? Well, the kitchen cabinets are all custom. They're all built right here on site, and they're all made out of plywood. The plywood's not your typical plywood in that it's a Baltic birch plywood, which means it has uh, 13 laminations, uh, where a typical three-quarter inch piece of plywood you'd find at a lumber store only has seven to eight laminations. Oh, okay. So then you don't need to put a finish on it. No, we left it just as it is. We just polyurethaned it, and we don't have to veneer it or edge it, and it saves in costs. The other thing about keeping an organized kitchen is you have to have some display space, and you added some at the end. Yeah, on the upper cabinets and the lower cabinets on both sides of the kitchen, we, we left some areas for artwork, for glasses, for pottery, various displays. Yeah, you can warm up any kind of kitchen space that way. Lighting is important in any kitchen, and you've got the task and the ambient that we all want, so tell me. 
Well, as you know, this loft is on the third floor in lower Manhattan. There's a lot of very tall buildings around here, so natural light's very difficult. Uh, and lighting was very important to our client. So we placed um, fluorescent lighting beneath the, the cabinets and covered it with a stock 2x2 two two aluminum angle. We also placed it above the cabinets so it can reflect off the ceiling. Um, over the kitchen island, we used halogen lights with a diffused lens uh, to highlight the kitchen island. Yes. Good idea. Thanks. Okay, what is this backsplash? Because uh, I haven't seen it before. Well, the backsplash is also it's keeping in uh, the theme of using inexpensive off-the-shelf materials. This is actually a lumicite. It's a structural acrylic that's translucent, and we put it right on wood studs as opposed to using sheetrock. We just framed out the entire walls between rooms with this translucent material, and it borrows light from either room depending where the lights are on. It looks really, really good. It almost looks like rice paper to me, but it, you knock it, it's hard. That's right. What about over here, another interesting well, element? Well, with the hearth, it was important that not only we ended the entertainment space, but we divided it off from the private, the bedroom beyond. But we wanted to bring light in, so we used a material, it's a polygol, which, which actually is a recycled polycarbonate. It's, it's basically a plastic or a high-tech 90s version of the corrugated green fiberglass that you'd see in so many carports in Florida. Well, this is a great kitchen. It looks good. I think the price is right. You've done a wonderful design job. Thank you, Joe. Thanks, Chris.